I've not been sleeping. I have not been sleeping. I'm back in this 1965 Fender Bandmaster. What a great amp. I got a late 60s Bandmaster Reverb head with the giant refrigerator sized cabinet coming up next. I'm looking at you, Jules. Thank you for being patient. So, we are gonna replace some driftos. These guys are severely drifted. I'm gonna get these guys out of here. And I've added some fresh solder. And now, we get about the business of removing this old filter pack board. Getting about the biz. And then from here, we're gonna do a really deep clean. We're gonna preserve all the little grease pencil stuff in the stamp, but I wanna get these leads off so I can go ahead and do a, a, a proper restoration of this part of the amp. So let's get about it. People even watch this stuff. Why are you watching this? I don't get it. Let's see. Why do you guys watch this stuff? Boop. There we go. back. Doesn't always happen. Sometimes it does. Get that guy out of there. So uh, what should be a 470, sorry, 4.7 K resistor has now drifted upwards of eight. That's a no, no. This guy should be Let's see, 1K, but he's not. He's more like two and a half. And probably it's okay in this in this day and age where I'm looking at him like today, for example. You know, it's like 116 wall volts, not, not, not terribly bad. Not terribly bad. And once we fully liberated the chassis of this of these two boards, this one and the insulator, then I can do some cleaning. And I'll go ahead and reset my workspace so you guys can take a peek. All right. Ah, oh, heck. You know, sometimes it's kind of cool to see what's under these things, so let's just do it together real quick. Sometimes you get a little surprise. All right. Not today. Check that out. See? So when you are doing a cap job, you should do this. This should happen. Because a lot of times, if the amp is this old, you know, it will have been serviced a few times. And sometimes the tech will just stab a piece of a, a rope of solder in there as he's cooking the eyelet. And you'll get a bit of a, a solder ball floating around down there that could potentially short things. Look how nice the chassis looks under there. Like this guy. He's a little errant ball of a of solder or some wire clippings that can fall through and wreak havoc. But not really in this case. Oh, this board wasn't touched, but that's nice. And you can see how it's deformed over the years. 
See if I can straighten that out. And we'll just take it from there. All right, so I just have to obviously fast forward. But this is what it should look like. You know. That's that's what you want to see. I straighten it out as much as I could. So, all right, update soon. Okay, just need to scrape off some flux here and clean up these joints. And uh, by and large, we're done. A little bit of carnage here, um, but this is where it's got to end off today. So this is your final daily update for, what is today? Tuesday? Good Lord, today's Tuesday. So um, again, just a quick recap. We removed that little um, terminal right here. Um, the power transformer mounting caps nut is now back where it should be, which is right against the chassis. Got a nice little shiny chassis uh, a solder joint there for your uh, power cord ground. I'm in the midst of uh, cleaning up all the other chassis ground. You can kind of see that I'm scraping away some of the old flux so I can get a better visual on even the brass grounding plate here. So it's gonna be a little messy for a moment. I did remove and re, um, repopulate this, uh, your, your bias supply board here and your rectifier board. We have some uh, nice little yummy ingredients for your day. And uh, here, you can see that I run another little filter node off of your bias pot. And I have some new screen grid resistors here with a nice air gap. And your actual grid resistors themselves are spot on, which is uh, quite surprising given the fact that they've been baking for decades. So I'm gonna leave them be. I like it. I'm gonna have to fix the actual wiring of your power cord, which I uh, didn't notice uh, initially because I was working from the other side of the chassis. This is what happens uh, sometimes. So the dude that was in here prior just kind of, um, well, he installed the power cord, but he didn't really do it in the safest manner possible, or at least up to current code. So I'll go ahead and repair that. And then I'll go ahead and move through and replace these electrolytics with some proper sized parts. And then we'll be at a test. We'll take it from there. All right, bye-bye. Travis, I want you to remember how nasty these barrels look, buddy. Look how nasty. Don't worry about that faceplate. We're going to clean it up, too. Whoop. Let's move on over. Look at that. We are going to fix that pronto, Trapper Joe. Come on, look at that. Much better. Look at that. That's what you want. Look at that.